Hello everyone and welcome to the Story X Story podcast, where we discuss stories across pop culture and give you advice on creating your own. It's episode number 16 and today we're debating the next decade of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm the Maya Matter co-founder, Nigel. And I'm Tazzy, streamer and co-host. And we have no other guests on this show because we are doing a special kind of debate format episode. We're trying some new things for season two. So we're calling this the Great Debate Show. Uh, that might stick, might change it, we'll see. But yeah, it's just going to be myself and Tazzy discussing this single topic. Before we get into it, just a reminder to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, uh, basically wherever you get your podcasts. You can send us feedback and questions to feedback at myamada.com and follow us on social media, myamada on Twitter, myamada tees on Instagram and Tazzy on everything, nice and consistent. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, are you ready to get into this topic, Tazzy? Um, kind <laughs> of. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That wasn't, wasn't the answer I was expecting. But, uh, take that if, as a yes, though. If I'm honest, uh, I'm, it feels so distant since, like, I've watched anything Marvel-related. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> What was the last Marvel film you watched? Uh, it was Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. That was, I watched that sort of like over the Christmas break. Um, I feel like I've watched quite a few things since, so it's a bit... Yeah, time. I think that's going to allow us to have a, just a calm and rational debate <laughs> about the future. I think that's that's what's going to happen now. Um, so, yeah, like I said, we're going to be discussing um, whether the MCU will see similar de- success in this decade as it did the last, or as I'm seeing a lot of people kind of hint in not so subtle ways that Endgame was the peak and it is all downhill from here in a Disney Plus infused mess so just uh i guess kind of goes without saying almost but spoiler alert we are going to be talking about some stuff from a whole decade basically what what we can remember over the last decade of the mcu so it's pretty likely we're going to spoil something at some point so you have been warned um all right so what i thought we could start with is just looking back at the the whole decade that started with Iron Man and ended with Endgame. Although technically it ended with Spider-Man Far From Home. Which I still haven't seen. You haven't? Okay. (laughs) No. I do my best not to spoil that for you by making no promises. Um, (laughs) So aside from Far From Home, what for you, like over this last 10 years, has been maybe the biggest surprise or just the most impressive achievement of this this 10 years of storytelling that they put together black panther just as a whole straight <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, no hesitation. all right cool so, i sort of thought about this before and i was like surprise and like impressive like the mcu is pretty impressive as it is uh just the fact that 10 years they've had us at the edge of our seats for 10 years uh is actually crazy and a bit a bit mind-blowing and i like it it's it's crazy to think how long ago the first Iron Man was and sort of like our attitudes towards it then as well compared to like by Endgame and what it was but I feel like uh, Black Panther had such a different vibe to it but still the same epic superhero vibe Uh (laughs) yeah no I get that it was it felt like a, a standalone within the universe. So I think they did a good job of kind of making something that was, you were able to just go in, watch as a self-contained story, but it still sort of mattered within the universe. So yeah, I I can, yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Um, I actually actually had, I had a few things. I was trying to decide what was like the most impressive, but I will, since you brought up Black Panther, I guess we'll start there. That was a surprise to me just because, I mean, I, 
obviously like knew about the Black Panther character, but I just didn't expect them to make a film about it. And then when they did, the fact that it was primarily sort of all black cast and they really, I guess, as much as they could within a sort of Hollywood uh, production, um, tried to make it, I guess, yeah, authentic. I'm going to use the word authentic, even though if maybe you've been to uh, anywhere, any country in Africa, you might sort of question some things, particularly uh, Forrest Whitaker's accent. But that aside, um, yeah, I'm just surprised that they made that film at all. And then surprised at the, the reaction from people who were um, comic fans, MCU fans, but also people who had never even watched an MCU or a comic book film. I remember my, uh, uh, my sister who has, I can assure you, had no interest in any of this stuff, um, watched that film. Uh, I remember going to see it and uh, being at the cinema and just like seeing just it full, the cinema full of people who are here to see Black Panther and just seeing it kind of break through your everyday uh, comic book movie fan uh, into the mainstream like it did uh, was a big surprise. Um, but I will also say, I think an another thing is just the, in a way, end game. But when I say end game, just the ability to not just sort of weave this story and then bring all these different films together and this uh, this narrative together, but like bring it home. Essentially, I think with Endgame they did it yeah, in the best way they could. And in terms of like an achievement, I think that in itself uh, is is an achievement just to be able to pull it all together in something that made made sense and had all the kind of elements of yeah, but like a good story. So sort of emotional deaths resolution uh, in their just full character arcs over the uh, ten years. Yeah. Definitely, yeah, I've got to agree with you there. And with such a uh, interesting beginning to that film. Yeah, because I, I didn't see it coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did you think of Iron Man when you saw it? Um, I was just like, I'm trying to like think back now, but <laughs> I, I just remember being like quite, like adamant in my thinking, like, um, like I'm as fine, I'm, but kind of it made me question it. I was like, they can't, they can't kill Iron Man, or definitely not at the beginning of a film. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, and eventually they did, but <laughs> <laughs> it took them a while. They got there, but you know, starting it with that was uh, definitely. I feel like that that was cleverly done. Actually, now thinking back on it. Uh, they kind of like emotionally prepped us. Oh, what for the death of <laughs> for the I, death of Iron Man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, when, when I look back, yeah, there's been a, a couple close calls that he's had that kind of, yeah, kind of let you know that you know this might not end well for him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I do remember watching Iron Man, just thinking, yeah, yeah, it's cool. Uh, I think that was a summary of my uh, my th thoughts after watching it, but I just never expected what was to come yeah and i wonder how much i guess they they must have you know had some plan but yeah how much of a surprise it was to them the success of iron man into the avengers and uh, and going on from there and i guess we'll kind of transition into looking ahead and that the idea that uh last month we released a bonus episode talking about uh, Martin Scorsese's comments on uh, comic book movies in general um, but also just seeing like I mentioned at the top where people just saying like this is it for the MCU and I always think back to Iron Man and that that place the world was in uh, at that time and just not being able to see this unfolding so when we look ahead uh, to the next 10 years it always kind of makes me laugh when people say oh end game that was it oh it's all downhill from here because when we watched iron man i mean i don't know about anyone listening i didn't see that coming so no. it it it's weird for me to hear people be so assured in saying that end game is it that is it 
mm. when yeah how, how can you be so sure about that also i think about like how old i was 10 years ago uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so i was a teen <laughs> <laughs> um and there are teens that are new teens now they weren't teens 10 years ago <laughs> yeah that, that is how time works yeah. <laughs> so they now have like the to experience this and they might see uh like one of the phase four films and think wow mad relate to this or find this exciting whatever whatever it is that brings them in and then now they're going to be alive for another 10 years and yeah. watching the movies i mean we are as well but yeah hopefully. obviously they're sure. at that stage where <laughs> it's like very fresh yeah um and the the previous um like films just haven't they wouldn't have had they won't have the same impact endgame wouldn't have had the same impact on them as it did oh, us okay. because we were there from yeah from iron man we were there yeah, from right. like whatever you know everyone has their opinions on uh iron man one two and three everyone has a different different, <laughs> different opinion opinions. and a different yeah, um, one. yeah and everyone sort of came in at a different point as well like not everyone came in at, at the first iron man yeah um and so we've got this i think people forget that there's continuously new generations of people existing and so you can go through a next phase of a series and it have new life because there is new life receiving that um and so i think it's just a bit it might be it might be over for you for you but <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> personally yeah you yeah have... personally on a personal level yeah okay fair enough but i think it's really like a bit naive to assume that it's just over because i think superheroes are only getting more liked and super villains i think i think yep. the next thing will be about the the super villains yeah i mean he's <laughs> got his own show um people thanos did have a big fan club so yeah for <laughs> um, I mean, so uh, I, I brought up um, Martin Scorsese, and I, I think we also did uh, when we we went sort of into that on a different episode. But one of the things I did want to bring out is his idea of uh, the the sort of franchise, the comic book franchise, uh, being risk averse. So uh, going into this next decade, I guess the one thing that I can see being a problem is when you've done something that's been so successful and there is a, a formula uh, to follow in terms of how they make the films, you can run the risk of like just sticking to that. So I feel like as we go into the phase four and beyond, the, the, the key thing that uh, Marvel Studios need to show is that this is really like a new beginning and this is something that is different because we've seen the Infinity Saga, and, we, and we've seen the the steps that got there. So I feel like if they are going to go and just repeat the same steps, then there's going to be a problem. So what I've seen that has given me hope is when they had that uh, Comic Con um, reveal, when they they showed they had that you know PowerPoint slide with all the different logos and the timeline. There were there were new things. There was the the Eternals, which is is coming um uh shang chi uh blade even though obviously there was a blade before but we're getting a new one and i feel that's the direction they need to go they need to just while keeping like the some of the characters that we do know and are sort of you know feel a link to but just take it in a new direction if that makes sense with mm -hmm. different properties different characters I think they're in the perfect position right now because um, they have like ended sort of like created closure with Endgame um, while also like sort of ending the reign of a couple of characters. Yeah. Um, and then we have sort of like Youngblood as well, but that we've, we were introduced during. Yeah, uh, like that, Captain the, Marvel, Black Panther. Yeah, um, 
And so now they can introduce like new, less known properties. Uh, and we're going to trust them. We're going to be like, it's still got the Marvel sort of seal yeah. of approval there. Um, so we're going to give it a chance that we wouldn't have if, you know, um, the previous series hadn't happened. What was it being called? The Infinity Saga, I yeah, believe. Saga. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's great because now is the time to take risks because they can and they can introduce characters that like a lot of people haven't heard of unless you are an avid comic book re reader um yeah so i think for me i'm one of those people where because i would watch more than read when i was growing up so there are uh there are definitely massive gaps in my common knowledge so it's good to like i see this as a chance to learn new characters and then go and check out the comics and see the original Sort of source material but um as you were talking have you i was just thinking have you seen um the wire no okay so first of all you should definitely watch that that is uh an amazing show but uh for anyone who has seen the wire it's um the a, a crime kind of drama series uh, on uh i think it was yeah hbo I feel like it was HBO and it takes place in Baltimore and it kind of looks at the city of Baltimore from different uh, aspects and starts off looking at the kind of street level uh, drug trade and the, the characters on both sides of that line, sort of the, uh, the people sort of, uh, sort of dealing, taking the, the police. And uh, I bring this up, there's a reason I'm bringing this up is uh, I almost feel that the MCU have to take a similar approach to uh, their storytelling because what The Wire did after the first season of focusing in on the uh, the police and the uh, drug dealers is for season two, they shifted completely to another aspect of the city uh, and kind of looked at uh, different uh, different class uh, of people. So they then focused like uh, like blue collar workers who are, I think they were like losing jobs. Uh, it's been a while since I've watched it, but <laughs> they were, they were struggling and it, it kind of linked because you still had the characters or many of the characters from the initial season, but they brought in new characters. They took new perspectives, uh, in later seasons, they looked at the, uh, the political side of things. Uh, they looked at the education side of things for season four, I think, and then season five, they looked at the media. So it was all in the same place, but they just took different um, looks at it. And I feel for the MCU, because there are so many, like one thing that's not in doubt is the material is there uh, for sure. It's just how you kind of introduce it. And I feel if they go and kind of sort of point the camera, so to speak, a completely different area of the MCU and different characters and different types of stories that will keep things uh, fresh um, while kind of keeping that link to the those original characters, the ones that are still alive, at least. Yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. So I, I think they can, I think they can do it. I feel confident. I feel confident yeah. that, that the people responsible for the last decade should be able to, you know, keep that going for a little while. I feel like that sort of leads us into another sort of point of uh, the Marvel universe. Um, and that's, Disney Plus. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, obviously, yes. uh, we have not just uh, films that are coming out, but we've got TV shows and shows on Disney Plus, um, which gives Marvel the chance to explore a lot more stories. Um, yeah. What do you think about different that? Different versions. Uh, oh, do you know what? I've, I've said it in a previous episode. I'm like, I don't want Disney Plus. I've got too many subscriptions. Like, <laughs> it's too much. But um, I feel like it's going to be the case where it's like, you know what? You're going to have to get a group of people and someone has each subscription because oh, wow. <laughs> you just share it. <laughs> Community subscriptions going. I like that. Yeah, because <laughs> you kind of need them. You kind yeah. of need them. Um, so on my uh, in my house, I'm... Now, uh, I run the Netflix account. Okay. Um, my housemate runs the Prime 
one of our friends is uh, the owner of the Now TV, (laughs) (laughs) which are all logged in in our house. Um, And it's kind of necessary uh, to be able to actually watch all the things you want to watch. I mean, we do a movie night, um, non-Marvel related. Uh, We'll just do a movie night. We watch whatever. Uh, we, it's just a chance for us to all get together, hang out, um, and just chill out. Uh, and then we watch movies. A lot of the time, terrible horrors, but we've been, like, branching out. Um, <laughs> Expanding your range. Yeah, we've been expanding our range. Um, and then sometimes, they're like, someone suggests a film, and so we go into Netflix, and I'm like, it's not on Netflix. So we're like, oh, okay. And we're like, we're going to Prime. <laughs> and it's like, oh, it's not on Prime. <laughs> <laughs> so now that's why we've now got the now tv logged in on someone's account uh because okay. it was like okay let's check now tv and see but it's like you've got all these subscriptions and you just you kind of need all of them because if you want to watch something and it's not on what you want then you're kind of stuck or someone's like are you watching this tv show and i'm like no is it on netflix they're like no and i'm like oh then i ain't watched it watching it yeah <laughs> and i'm like well kind of have to to be included in like discussions and actually like not miss out and stuff and um i feel that's what it's going to be like not having disney plus it will be like whole conversations will happen and yeah you won't be able to get involved because you ain't got disney plus (laughs) yeah you know what i kind of i so i am i am optimistic but there were a few things that uh i feel could hurt the chances of success for the mcu and the the lack of taking risks is one of them i mentioned but the other one is disney plus and specifically so we had though the netflix marvel shows which were great um iron fist um aside uh were great i actually and, enjoyed iron fist <laughs> i mean look it, it was it was good the, i feel because i can go into like we could talk about iron fist but i feel the the main problem is that the other shows were so good like Iron Fist was a was a decent show. Uh, it had its issues, as you know most shows do. But I think the level of the other shows was just so good that it was just judged and it fell short of that, which made it worse. That's what I feel. Okay. But if, <laughs> I feel like we're gonna have to do another uh, podcast episode on, <laughs> on Iron Fist. Um, I actually <laughs> yeah, my, so so you had uh, those shows, but those shows didn't connect into the what was happening in cinema so there was an element of okay if you watch it great you get good entertainment if not you haven't missed anything when you go and see the avengers or iron man or whatever it might be whereas now i feel there's a a danger of saying to audiences and i'm thinking obviously non-disney plus subscribing audiences but just the mainstream audience there's a danger of saying to them that to enjoy you know, whatever film is coming out next, you have to have watched 30 hours of this series on this other subscription service that costs whatever it, it costs a month. And I feel that there's a risk of having, like, I guess, overburdening burdening people, even if not, like someone might not even get Disney Plus, so they might have it and not watch these shows, but it just, the perception of, oh, now I've got to watch all this, and I'm not going to do that. So do I need to even go and see this film? Uh, And I feel that that there's a potential for that to happen uh, in some cases, and that could affect things. I feel like that is a risk, but if they are, if they do it right, then it will be more like uh, sort of the Marvel TV shows that already exist. Um, Yes. uh, So Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. I never even finished it. (laughs) Me neither. I, I barely started, to be fair. I got like two, two and a half seasons in, I think. Something like that. Okay. Anyway, um, but that kind of run alongside the MCU uh, without sort of you didn't you didn't need to watch it. Yeah. But if you watched it, you would have additional story. Yeah, and I, I think that's the right way to do it. So it's it's however they communicate it. Like it's not essential yeah. viewing, and hopefully the way they sort of write and and film it that it's it is an essential viewing to enjoy uh the films because yeah for for them to continue the success they've got to make it so yeah just people don't feel feel overworked basically i also 
I also hope that some of well, I, well, they have sort of said some of it is going to be, but like the Disney Plus shows that not everything is you know Marvel uni- Marvel uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe inclines. Like I think Disney Plus is a great space to have uh, sort of like Marvel superheroes, but it has nothing to do with the MCU. They're just yeah. standalone shows that exist. Yeah, uh, and have no connection whatsoever. They exist in a different universe. Okay. Um, yeah. And I think they have expressed that they want to do that with some of the the shows or Disney Plus. Yeah, no, that is promising to hear in that case. So I, I'm interested in how just the shows themselves, what they do uh, with them, but then importantly, how they link them into what's happening into the next phase and how audiences respond uh, to that um, so that is promising and then um, the other promising thing I feel that will kind of gives me hope is um, Disney did buy Fox so that thing still did happen and has yet to be fully integrated in terms of like actual uh, cinema releases so somewhere down the line there is a Marvel Studios X-Men there is mm-hmm. a Marvel Studios Fantastic Four to come in and I feel that's a whole kind of injection of, of uh, a sort of story potential because uh, as as great as it is to kind of explore these like lesser known properties at least sort of from a mainstream perspective you know people everyone knows the X-Men and Fantastic Four you know despite those films are still kind of out there in the, in the public consciousness so I feel those are things that can if someone is feeling fatigued or doesn't care about these new characters yet that they, they haven't heard of like X-Men is a good chance of just like bringing them back uh, into it yeah I feel like as well uh, the Fantastic Four is a good one um, because if it's done well it'll be so good uh, yes, and we have been saying that for many, many <laughs> <laughs> releases. <laughs> because the Fantastic Four as characters are awesome. Yeah. I love them. I remember loving them as kids. Like, I, I don't read comic books, so this is all uh, cartoons. Yeah. Um, and uh, maybe even the Silver Surfer. <laughs> Silver Surfer, very cool. He just, that's, I just remember him being cool. Um. So, yeah, no, that is hope. Like, obviously, the X-Men um, have sort of had a bit of a a bumpy ride, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you could say that. <laughs> I mean, it, it did well course. with Logan. Let's, let's hold that in our... Yeah, like, Logan was amazing. And I really yeah. hope that uh, films like Logan continue to exist. And yeah. uh, they don't get too disnified <laughs> yeah that is another um, worry like i think obviously disney have this image to uphold but um i think logan and deadpool sort of proved that there is a way you can do it <laughs> there is an audience that want a more r-rated avenue and it doesn't have to tarnish the Disney family-friendly name. Uh, so maybe they just have to, like, set up another studio. <laughs> yeah, a cover, a fun studio, so... Yeah. <laughs> so like, get all these R-rated films out. Just do it. There, there's obviously a massive space for R-rated superhero films. Yep. Um, and I think Disney can do it, you know? Okay. I'm going to go with your optimism on that one. <laughs> and we'll so they're willing to take the risk. They can do it. <laughs> take note, Disney. Take the risk. Take the risk. All right. So if we kind of keep looking ahead, let's say, well, I guess to answer the question, do you think the MCU will be at least as successful as it has been in this decade, as it has been in the past decade? And what are you most looking forward to in the next uh, 10 years of Marvel Universe stories? Um, oh, I think it, it has the potential to do as good. Um, 
I think it's just whether Disney want to take some risks with Marvel. Um, and I think the way it is going to be as successful is if they do take risks. That's the only way. Um, if they don't take any risks, then I think it's not going to be as good because people are expecting more and better. Because, yeah. And you've seen that even on over the previous decade. Um, the way people rate Marvel films, like they'll say this, I don't know, I'm trying to think of, I think like Winter Soldier was yeah. such a terrible film. And I'm like, how? It was not a terrible film. <laughs> <laughs> because everyone's holding it to this like Disney, this uh, Marvel standard that if you make anything less than whatever was before, it gets rated terrible. <laughs> right. people see it as terrible whereas if it existed without all the other films it wouldn't be terrible so they're sort of by comparison kind of thing yeah like exp living up to people's expectations or whatever those expectations, expectations might be exactly so you, they've always got to go they've always got to do something more or different to what they've done before yeah uh, be able to to hit those expectations but as well maybe like they'll let us simmer for a bit so that we like spend so much time without like the big hits and give us some little stuff that when they do, you know, uh, release a heavy hitter that everyone's just like, oh, wow, <laughs> Marvel's back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could be. I mean, I feel, I kind of agree with you. I, I mean, it's, it's always hard to predict, but I, I think they will be uh, successful because like it or not, these films are coming. It's just whether they'll be good and live up to the standard that's been set and i feel they can do it and, and the reason is essentially uh kevin feige is just having having someone oversee a vision um over a period of time and i, I feel there's there's something to that as as we've seen and i, I just find it hard to to say that the people responsible for this last 10 years sort of going from where they were to where it ended up and learning along the way aren't then capable of continuing that storytelling particularly with sort of the indications of the direction they're taking with bringing in sort of new characters hopefully new types of films new mixing in new genres but then also like i say sort of sort of big properties to come in next men fantastic four so I, I just feel that there's there's enough there for them to just continue taking this on and hopefully the sort of the, the tv stuff doesn't hamper that by overburdening people with too much story or, or feeling like they need to take on too much and just giving that fatigue but i think they'll be able to do it and i guess i'm i'm most looking forward to to us things i've not seen before so like i said like comic storylines um i might not be familiar with and just seeing how they're interpreted for uh, the big screen and then getting a chance to go back and like be directed to different comics and, and just reading new stuff. So I'm just looking forward to just new, uh, new stories, new characters that uh, I get to learn about. Yeah. Also they have good marketing, so I don't think we do can not do underestimate the power <laughs> <laughs> of the mouse's marketing budget. That I mean, we can, we can talk about like how good the films are, but let's yeah. be honest. <laughs> Marvel and marketing, very yeah. good. And at the end of the day, if they can get their marketing right, then they're going to be successful, aren't they? Yeah. So <laughs> I, I think basically what you're saying is this whole half an hour has been <laughs> just just marketing. They've got the budget. It'll, it'll, <laughs> that's pretty much the as long as they get us talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if uh, uh, Mickey does want to give us some of that marketing, <laughs> spend happy we're talking about it um but yeah um great so i mean let us know what you think listeners so if you think like the next decade is going to be an absolute disaster uh let us know if you're looking forward to something in particular a particular character a particular storyline just send us a comment you can get us on email feedback at mymeta.com or just reach out and shout at us on Twitter, on Instagram, and whatever other social media. I can't remember what else we're on, but Maya Meta on Twitter, Maya Meta Tees on Instagram, 
and Tazzy with three eyes on both. So yeah, look forward to hearing what people have to say. Uh, so just to round up this episode, we are on Spotify. You can subscribe to us there. You can follow us on Apple Podcasts. We're also on SoundCloud. And if you would like episodes 24 hours early, you can support us on Patreon. Um, as we always talk about stories, uh, we are storytellers. So we've got to remember to mention our own stories, our own manga, uh, graphic novels are available on our website. You can go to myamada.com to see all of those, including our latest one, Hot Lunch Volume 1. And if you are a gamer, you can check out our gamepad event happening in London in... So I was going to try and work out the, the number of weeks. I don't know why, but <laughs> June, 20th, <laughs> um, June 20th, which is a, yeah, many, many weeks away, but go to gamepad.events uh, for tickets and information and all that stuff. On our next episode, we're going to be discussing the manga, All You Need Is Kill, which was the inspiration for the highly underrated and surprising uh, film Edge of Tomorrow starring Tom Cruise. And we'll be welcoming back uh, Gary Swaby from The Coalition and inviting the Manga Forum to talk all about that. Just a reminder, our email address is feedback at myameta.com. Please do send us your feedback and questions uh, from anything we've talked about today. And yeah, check us out online. So until next time, stay tuned. Thank you.